In this problem, we're looking at a helicopter. We're told that the tail rotor, shown here, is there to prevent unwanted rotation of the body of the helicopter when the main rotor, shown here, changes speed. We've got four main rotor blades and we're given the information about the size, shape, and mass of those. And we're given information about the mass and mass moment of inertia of the body of the helicopter. We're told the tail rotor is functioning and the angular velocity of the body of the helicopter remains at zero regardless of the change in speed of the main rotor from 200 RPM, that's going to be state one, to 300 RPM, state two. We're also told to assume that change occurs uniformly over eight seconds. That should be a hint that this probably can be solved by impulse momentum. So we're asked to find the force exerted by the tail rotor and the final horizontal velocity of the helicopter body. So we're going to look uh, at two states. We'll start with state one. We're going to draw the helicopter out in the x, y plane. So this is a top view. The helicopter rotor, main rotor is here. We're told that it sits directly over the center of gravity of the helicopter. We've got the tail rotor here, and that's going to provide a lift force laterally. We're told that the rotors, the main rotor, has some omega r1, but that the body of the helicopter isn't rotating. We're also told it starts from rest, so VG1 equals zero. Linear velocity of the center of gravity equals zero. Great. So we're going to want to look at both linear and angular momentum here. So we can write that the linear momentum, J in the y direction, one equals zero, and J in the x direction, one equals zero because there's no motion of the center of gravity. Now we're going to find that because there's only a force in the y direction, we're going to have zero equals zero, conservation of momentum in the x direction. And we can write that the angular momentum about point G at state one equals I of the rotor, omega of the rotor one, and then if we had it, I of the body, omega of the body at state one, because this is a system. But we know that omega of the body at state one is zero. So if we have a system, we're adding the momenta about point G, where the center of gravity of both the rotor and the body lie at G, um, but the body is zero. So we'll need to know something about omega R1 we're told it's 200 RPM, or 200, let's write it differently, revolutions per minute. We've got to convert that into radians per second. So we can say one minute is 60 seconds, and two pi radians is one revolution. So we end up with a value of 20.9 rads per second. We also need to know the mass moment of inertia of the rotor. We're told those four rotor blades are like four thin rods. So we can say that's four times, and they end at G, so one third M of the rotor, L squared. And we can write that as four times one third we're told those are 30 kilogram rotors and have a length of five meters, all squared, and we get a value of 1,000 kilograms meters squared. Great, so we know everything about the momentum at state one. So now we're gonna look at state two. This is just after the rotor change speed.
So we'll draw our helicopter again. We've got the main rotor. Centered at G. We've got the tail rotor, which has some force L, lift force. Note that we're not considering the momentum of the tail rotor. We're not given its mass. We're going to assume that its mass is very much smaller than the main rotor and the body, and so it essentially has no momentum because it has no mass and no mass moment of inertia. So we're told the main rotor has some omega r2. It's increased. We know with the tail rotor functioning, omega of the body at state 2 is still going to be equal to 0. So that that's the purpose of the tail rotor to prevent the body from rotating. But we expect to have some vg2. Now, vg2 does not equal 0 in this case. So we've added some linear momentum to the system. We need to know that omega r2, if we convert, um, it was 300 RPM. And if we do our conversion, we find that's 31.4 rads per second. And so we can write that the linear momentum in the y direction at state 1 is going to be the mass, the total mass, so the mass of the rotors and the body, because the whole system has to move together. The rotors aren't going to move without the body and vice versa, times Vg2. Vg2, where we expect it to be wholly in the y direction, because that's the only direction where we have a force that leads to a linear impulse and a change in linear momentum. So we expect the linear momentum in x at state, oops, sorry, these should be state 2, is going to be equal to 0 again, so 0 equals 0. And the angular momentum at state 2 about point g is going to be i r omega r 2. Again, we would normally add the angular momentum of the body, but we know it's not rotating. Great. So now we know our linear and angular momentum at both states, and we have to look at impulse. So we're going to have a linear impulse because of this force at the tail rotor. And we're also going to have an angular impulse. That angular impulse is what prevents the body from rotating. And that's because we're taking moments about point G, and so that force at the tail has a moment arm. So we're going to start by writing linear impulse momentum. And again, we're focused in the y direction. That's the only one that's going to have any change. So we have, so we have j y1 plus the integral from 0 to time t of the force at the tail rotor, the lift force, dt, equals j y2. This first linear momenta is zero, and so we're left with the, the second two terms, and we know this is the total mass times the velocity of the center of gravity at state two. Then we can write angular impulse momentum and we're going to do that about G. We have K G at state 1 plus the integral of R it's going to be the tail with respect to G cross the lift force dt from 0 to t equals k g2. So what we have, we've got g, we've got this r vector of the tail with respect to g, and we've got this lift force. So that cross product is going to be in the negative k hat. So we can write this again as k g1 plus 
this is going to be six, six meters in the negative i hat. We can say this is r tail with respect to g. We'll take that out. It's constant times the magnitude of the lift force, and that's going to be negative dt in the k hat direction equals kg2. This value, this integral, it's we've seen it up in our linear momentum. That's just going to be m total vg2. We end up with i r omega r1 in the k hat minus 6 meters times m total times vg2 in the k hat equals i r omega r2 also in the k hat. We can solve this. We know that m total equals m body plus 4 m rotors. We're going to solve for vg2. This is part a. And we'll find that equals to minus ir omega r2 minus omega r1 over 6 m total which equals minus 1,000 kilograms meters squared times the difference, which is 10.5 rads per second over six times 750 kilos plus four times 30 kilos. And we find that VG2, which we initially said was in the positive J hat, equals minus 2.0 meters per second in the j hat. Great. Now for part b, we're asked to find the lift force. So we look at linear momentum and t equals 8 seconds. So we can say integral from 0 to 8 of FL dt equals the total mass times VG2, which we just found, which equals 870 kilos times negative 2.0 meters per second. Uh, the lift force is constant. We're told it's, it's the same. So FL times 8 minus 0 equals minus 1745 newton meter seconds and we find that fl equals minus 1745 divided by 8 which gives us a lift force for the tail rotor of minus 218.1 newtons in the j hat so opposite to the way we drew it Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and material at Mechanics Map.